Hello and welcome to the History Chronicles. If you like our work then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like to support the channel in return for exclusive perks, please visit our Patreon page. Now, on with the video. Today's History Chronicle begins with the birth of Benito Mussolini on the 29th of July 1883 in the northern Italian town of Predapio, De Rosa and Alessandro Mussolini. Growing up, young Mussolini gained a reputation as a pest or bully making fun of the other children in his class and would pinch people during church services, resulting in his unsuspecting victims crying out in pain for no apparent reason. But his temperamental nature landed Benito into trouble wherever he went. But Mussolini eventually gained a teaching diploma in 1901. Benito attempted to teach, but was rejected for the profession. Instead, he spent the next few months indulging his love of alcohol and women. In 1902, he fled to Switzerland to escape a military service, and after gaining work as a labourer, he started attending socialist meetings in the Swiss town of Lausanne. It was around this time that Mussolini's gift for oratory began to manifest itself, as he quickly became a leading figure within the far left around Lausanne. During this period, Benito also began working as a writer for a socialist newspaper named The Future of the Workers, which was run by Italian immigrants within Switzerland. He ardently hated capitalism and religion, decrying both frequently in speeches and essays. Mussolini returned to Italy in 1904, after an amnesty was declared for deserters of military service. After five years of obscurity, he returned to his previous existence of extreme left-wing politics in 1909, when he became the editor of local socialist newspapers in northeastern Italy, after which he moved to Milan. At the age of 26 in 1914, Mussolini moved in with a young woman named Raquel Guidi, whom he had fallen in love with in 1909. They would go on to have five children together. Meanwhile, Mussolini found a talent for writing, which led him to start his own newspaper titled La Lotta de Classe, or The Class Struggle, which gained him such notoriety that he was appointed in 1912 to be the editor of the foremost socialist newspaper in Italy named Avanti, meaning forward. Under his guidance, Avanti soon more than doubled its readership. During this period, Mussolini began to radically change his views regarding Italy's involvement in World War I, and began writing articles expressing his support for the war, and subsequently resigned from editorship of Avanti, and was expelled from the Italian Socialist Party. After this, Benito then took the editorship of another newspaper named Il Popolo d'Italia, or The People of Italy, in which he articulated his embrace of nationalism. However, he continued to support socialist ideologies and began to merge nationalism and socialism into an ideology known as fascism. Following Italy entering the First World War, Mussolini was drafted into the army. He served for a time in the army, but was wounded late in the war by an accidental mortar explosion. After a long period of convalescence, Mussolini left the army to resume the editorship of Il Popolo d'Italia, at the behest of its rich patrons. Benito returned to an Italy that was crippled by widespread unemployment and growing unrest amongst its population, which resulted in polarisation between the country's political groups. Mussolini used his influence as the editor of a national newspaper to exploit this polarisation by arguing for the need of a man who in his own words was ruthless and energetic to make a clean sweep. This would eventually culminate in Mussolini in 1919, forming the Revolutionary Fascist Party, which was initially composed of people of various political persuasions, such as discontented socialists and former Italian soldiers, in order to combat the growing threat of the nation's communists. The word fascism itself comes from the Italian fasci, which was a symbol of authority in ancient Rome, consisting of an axe head surrounded by a bundle of sticks that were carried by the attendants of magistrates who kept order in public meetings and also administered punishments on offenders. Mussolini and his followers, who wore black shirts, began to use violent tactics to crush any opposition to their ideology over the coming months. This violence, the threat of communism, the economic depression and Mussolini's oratory skills helped the fascist party grow into a national movement. Mussolini's power and influence grew even further when the revolutionary fascist party won 35 seats in the Italian parliament during the 1921 general elections. After their victory, Mussolini agreed with his fellow fascist leaders to change the name of the movement to the National Fascist Party. By this time, the far right had effectively eliminated or replaced the vast majority of the country's unions. However, when the last vestiges of the socialist trade union movement 
called an anti-fascist general strike in July of 1922, Mussolini gave the government the ultimatum that if they did not crush the unrest, the fascists would save the state themselves. Though the strike ended quickly, but shortly afterward, a gathering of some 30,000 party members in Naples on the 22nd of October 1922, Mussolini called for a march on Rome to force the government to accede to fascist demands. The fascist march on Rome began on the 28th of October 1922, which prompted the Italian government under Luigi Fanta to ask the king to declare a state of siege, which would have resulted in the Italian army attempting to put down the fascist march. King Victor Emmanuel refused to sign such an order, probably fearing that the monarchy would then also be overthrown if the fascists defeated the Italian army. The king instead asked Mussolini to form a cabinet on the 29th of October 1922. For many people, there was hope in the rise of the fascists. Many hoped that with a strong government, protests and devastating strikes would end and the state would be able to return to normality. However, the rise of the fascists was not without its repercussions, which is perhaps best demonstrated by the kidnapping and murder by Mussolini's black shirts of the Socialist Party deputy Giacomo Matteotti in 1924, which severely damaged his reputation. Despite this setback, Mussolini managed to hold on to power, even though there was little doubt that he had sanctioned the murder. After a public outcry, he was forced to act by arresting three suspects from within the fascist party, only one of whom served any time in prison. When Mussolini first came to power, his coalition government adopted an economic policy based on free trade and tax reform, which was headed by the talented liberal finance minister Alberto Di Stefani which culminated in the country benefiting from economic growth and low unemployment over the next few years. However, this upturn of the Italian economy was not destined to last, as Di Stefani was dismissed after a devaluation in the Italian lira in 1925, after which Mussolini acted to take a greater degree of control of the Italian economy, and following elections that assured fascist control over the legislature, he pushed through the Italian parliament the so-called Christmas Eve law which effectively made him accountable only to the king, and ended any say Parliament had in the rule of the country. His party also outlawed opposition parties soon thereafter. In conjunction with this, Mussolini began from 1925 onwards to be known by the title Il Duce, or the leader of fascism amongst other grandiose titles, including head of government and his excellency, although to the wider world he was still largely known as the Italian Prime Minister. Mussolini slowly increased his control or interference of virtually every aspect of the Italian economy from 1925 onwards, until by 1934 he stated that three quarters of the Italian economy, industry and agriculture lay in the hands of the state, meaning that Italy was second only to the Soviet Union in its terms of its nationalisation of the economy. Not everyone in Italy was prepared to submit to Mussolini's rule, and various attempts were made on his life during the late 1920s, including on one occasion when Il Duce came within inches of being killed, when a pistol bullet grazed his nose. Yet even with these events, Mussolini held almost total control over the government and state. But with this control and power came a sense of invulnerability, as well as a reaffirmation of Mussolini's self-imposed superiority and ego as he began to more and more see himself as a Caesar-like figure, who was destined to make his country the regional and world power he felt it deserved to be. This period of the late 1920s, in which Mussolini's reputation was never higher, soon gained him the adoration and praise of many of Europe's fellow far-right parties, and the leader of one of these, Adolf Hitler, even wrote to Mussolini asking for an autograph around this time, which was subsequently turned down. Despite his earlier rebuff to Hitler, Il Duce was soon forced to take the Nazis seriously after the party's rise to power in Germany in 1933, resulting in him a year later inviting Germany's new Führer to a state visit of Italy in which Hitler was greeted with the typical Italian fascist pomp and pageantry. Mussolini would, in private, claim that he did not like Hitler, describing him as paranoid and their relations were then severely damaged the year after Hitler's visit when Mussolini's ally, the Chancellor of Austria, Engelbert Dollfuss, was assassinated by Nazi supporters in July of 1934. Hitler wanted to bring his homeland of Austria under his control, but the murder of his ally prompted Mussolini to threaten war with Germany if they attempted an invasion of his northern neighbour. Mussolini promptly moved Italian troops to Italy's border with Austria, which temporarily produced the desired effect of stalling German aggression 
for four years. In an effort to expand the Italian Empire, Mussolini ordered on the 3rd of October 1935 Italian forces into the free nation of Ethiopia. Too much global outrage. By May of 1936, they had captured its capital, Addis Ababa, after which Mussolini proclaimed an Italian victory. But sporadic fighting would continue within the country for the next six years, in which Il Duce's forces committed various war crimes, including the killing of entire Ethiopian villages and the use of poison gas, which had been banned under international agreement since 1925. In September of 1937, Adolf Hitler invited Mussolini to a state visit to Germany, which prompted Mussolini to shift his alliance closer to Hitler. Upon returning to Italy, Mussolini enacted new laws that severely restricted the rights and freedoms of the country's Jewish population, and ordered the printing of anti-Semitic newspaper articles in order to appease Nazi Germany. From this point on, Mussolini would become more and more subservient and intimidated by the ever-growing strength of Hitler's Third Reich, and even ordered his own soldiers to adopt the Nazi goose step in parades as he began to align himself more and more with his northern neighbour. Emboldened and perhaps envious of Hitler's success, Il Duce then ordered Italian forces to invade Albania in April 1939. The invasion lasted five days. Flushed with success, Mussolini and Hitler formalised their alliance on the 22nd of May of 1939 by signing the Pact of Steel Treaty, which for better or worse meant that Italy's fate was now irrevocably tied to that of Germany's. However, Hitler was working to his own timetable, and after formalising a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union on the 23rd of August 1939, he gave the go-ahead for the invasion of Poland on the 1st of September, which prompted both Britain and France to declare war on Germany two days later. Despite Hitler's successful invasion of Poland, Il Duce continued to wait to see how Germany's forces would fare against the Western Allies. But after the Fuhrer's whirlwind advance across France in the summer of 1940, Mussolini now feared that Italy would be eclipsed by Hitler's Germany, and even though his armed forces were not yet ready, the Italian dictator now felt emboldened enough to join the conflict, and declared war on the Allies on the 10th of June 1940. Shortly before this, on the 29th of May 1940, Mussolini had finally persuaded the Italian king, Victor Emmanuel, who was technically the supreme commander of the country's armed forces, to hand over his authority to him. And on the 11th of June, the king gave a proclamation which named Mussolini as supreme commander of the armed forces operating on all fronts. Mussolini himself had long dreamt of resurrecting the Roman Empire, as he wanted the Mediterranean Sea to become an Italian lake. And as France was no longer a threat in the region, and Britain was greatly weakened after the fall of France, Il Duce calculated that this was the time to strike. He ordered the Italian 10th Army to cross the Libyan-Egyptian border on the 9th and 10th of September 1940, after which it advanced towards Alexandria and Cairo. But despite early successes, the Italian forces were met and pushed back by British forces under Archibald Wavell in the humiliating defeat that was Operation Compass. That effectively ended Il Duce's hopes for establishing a new Roman Empire in a matter of months, in which he lost some 150,000 troops dead, wounded and captured. Mussolini had, in short, overestimated his opponent's willingness to fight, and greatly underestimated the capabilities of his enemies to resist him, which in turn severely damaged Germany's own chance of success in World War II as they now had to prop up their weakened allies, who were now little more than a liability. After his invasion of Egypt had failed, Il Duce ordered the invasion of Greece through Albania in October of 1940, which led to another military disaster, in which the Italians lost another 100,000 troops. Hitler had by this time lost all confidence in his ally, and realising that his alliance with Mussolini's Italy was now more of a hindrance rather than a help, resolved to send his own German forces to rectify the Italian reversals in Greece and North Africa, which crucially delayed his planned invasion of the Soviet Union. To rectify what he saw as Mussolini's blunders, Hitler issued Directive 22 on the 11th of January 1941, in which he sent the Africa Corps under Erwin Rommel to intervene in North Africa in February, and also diverted more troops to secure Greece in April. Over the next two years, Rommel caused chaos in North Africa, meaning that the Italians increasingly took a back seat across the Mediterranean until the Africa Corps was itself decisively defeated in the Battle of El Alamein in Egypt in 1942, and was forced into a fighting retreat until Tunisia finally fell in a pincer movement between the British 
and the newly arrived Americans in May of 1943. The fall of North Africa, as well as America now sending large numbers of troops to Europe, made Italy, and in particular Sicily, a prime target for an Allied invasion. The Allied invasion of Sicily began on the 10th of July 1943, and within two months they were invading mainland Italy. Mussolini's health was in decline. At the same time, steps were then taken by Italian officials to remove him from office until on the 25th of July 1943, King Victor Emmanuel summoned Mussolini to Rome and told him that the war was lost and that he had appointed Marshal Pietro Badoglio Prime Minister. After this, Mussolini was arrested and imprisoned. But Hitler had by this time determined to occupy Italy himself to halt the Allied advance. Despite his massive mistakes and incompetence, Hitler would ultimately remain loyal to Mussolini and then determined to rescue his old ally who was being held in Campo Imperator, which was a mountain resort in central Italy, east of Rome. The Führer sent a force of paratroopers in gliders to rescue Il Duce in the Grand Sasso raid on the 12th of September 1943, which was a complete success and Mussolini was taken back to Germany without a shot being fired in a small stork aeroplane which was capable of short takeoffs and landings. With half of Italy siding with the Allies, Hitler appointed Mussolini as the leader of a German puppet state in northern Italy named the Italian Socialist Republic in September of 1943. Mussolini was now a shadow of his former self and was more of a prisoner than an ally as he was now under a 24-hour SS guard who monitored his telephone calls and restricted his movements. As the Allied advance ground northward in 1945, Mussolini attempted to flee the state with a group of German soldiers, but he was discovered hiding in the back of a truck by a group of pro-communist partisans on the 27th of April 1945 and was afterwards transported along with his mistress Clara Petacci to the village of Guilino di Mezegra. The next day, on the 28th of April 1945, Benito Mussolini was shot by a firing squad along with his mistress and a number of his followers. Their corpses were taken to Milan where they were strung up in front of a crowd of thousands until they were cut down and dragged through the streets whilst being spat on and kicked by the angry mob and afterwards the former dictator's body was buried in an unmarked grave in the Masoko Cemetery in Milan, and later reburied in his hometown of Prodapio, where it remains to this very day. During his lifetime, Benito Mussolini went from being a schoolteacher to founding fascism, and attempting to recreate the Roman Empire by joining with Adolf Hitler in World War II, in which he gambled both his own future as well as that of the country he loved. In his dictatorship of Italy, Mussolini built a police state that rivaled that of Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin as his control over Italy was near total, as he crushed all opposition and eliminated anyone who he considered to be a threat. He is also considered to be responsible for tens of thousands of deaths and executions within Italy, which were carried out on his instruction. And it is also claimed that during his invasion of Ethiopia, Mussolini's troops committed war crimes and murdered tens of thousands of innocent civilians. You have been watching the History Chronicles. We'd love to know what you think of Benito Mussolini. Please let us know below, and if you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Also, if you'd like to support our work going forward, please visit our Patreon page. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the History Chronicles.